In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, the ages of all ages, Amen. Uh, I made a mistake last Sunday. You, some of you might have noticed. I didn't notice till later. But I said there were two Sundays left, then Easter, or two weeks, then Holy Week. That was, this is tomorrow, so now we are right. Now we have two weeks, then Holy Week. So I apologize for my, uh, my I was never good at math, so I'm so sorry for that. But I know that today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. I'm positive of that. And um, it's a very special gospel reading on the fifth Sunday, the gospel of the paralyzed man or the paralytic. And um, there's a beautiful verse that the Lord ends with when he tells them, my father has been working until now and I have been working. So this reminds us that the work of the Lord is never ending. And if the work of the Lord is constant, that means the road to recovery or the road towards holiness or the road towards Jesus is also constant. Even Pope Shenouda has a famous book about repentance and purity. It's called The Life of. It's a journey. So when we begin with the Lord, it's not a momentary moment of change and then that's it. There has to be a continuance. There has to be a pursuit. That's why it's, it's truly a road to recovery. It's a road to victory like we spoke of a few weeks ago. And the Lord is with us every step of the way. The Lord told this man today after he healed him, he left him and the, the Lord looked for him and found him in the temple. And afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. So the Lord made it extremely clear that sin can lead to problems. In his case, that's what happened to him, or partially. But for us, it's a reminder that sin can completely lead us to death. If, it, if it's left unattended, will kill. It's like any, any disease that's left untaken care of, it kills. Sin kills. So the Lord says, something worse could come upon you if you're not careful. And the Lord is telling him this because he loves him. And he's telling me this because he loves me. And he's telling you this because he loves you. And he's reminding us that, again, if I decide to change, if I repent, it's not just, okay, I'm done. I, I repented doing that again what am I doing instead of it what am I doing in its place and this is a, a very important point to the Lord there's another beautiful passage I like a lot in the gospel of St. Luke last night we read Luke 18 in Vespers and this morning we look at Luke 18 in a different angle if you remember there's this very interesting blind man not the one we're going to read about next Sunday God willing but another blind man and he was on the road towards Jericho and the Lord was, was passing by, so he, he heard. He said, what's going on? He can hear the commotion. He said, what's happening? They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is coming. So as soon as he heard the words, Jesus of Nazareth is coming, he started to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And they tried to stop him from speaking. He said, shh, don't speak. Shh, shh. And the more they told him, shh, 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 the more he would speak louder. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus found him and heard him. And of course, being the Lord, being love himself, had compassion. And he basically told him, what do you want me to do? He said that I may receive my sight. So the chapter ends with this. Immediately, he received the sight. But what matters is what he did next. If you look back to the paralytic man and this man, he followed him glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. You see that? The, the consequence of sin, if left unattacked, un, you know, checked, it'll kill. The consequence of repentance, if continued to be nurtured and progressively growing in a person, will lead to holiness, which will lead to more holiness, which will affect those around the person. And that's why they all gave praise to God. So when the Lord says this to the paralytic man, says, sin no more lest the worst thing come upon you, there must be a call to action. There must be a call to action. This man gives us this example. This blind man immediately glorified God, followed God, and because of that glorification, and because of that following, others gave glory and praise to God as well. St. Cyril of Alexandria speaks of that. He says, now that he was delivered from his blindness, did he, did he neglect the duty of loving Christ? So was it enough? Okay, I'm no, I can see now. Let me go 
you know, buy food, let me see what I'm eating, let me, let me be able to observe. He says, certainly he did not. It says, he followed him, offering him glory like to God. He was set free from double blindness. Not only did he escape from the blindness of the body, but also from that of the mind and heart. He would not have glorified him as God had he not possessed spiritual vision. He became the means of others giving Christ glory. For it says that all the people gave glory to God. So the man did not say, okay, great, I can see now. Just like the disciples, when they caught a multitude of fish, they didn't say, well, now the business is booming. Let's get more fish and make more out of the fish. But on the contrary, they left everything and followed him. The Samaritan woman, after he gave her the water that springs up into everlasting life, she left her jug, her pitcher, and she followed him. And she spoke of him and praised God. We're called to do more than just say, I don't sin. In the book of Romans, St. Paul writes, How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? If I'm dead to sin, so he says, because when he speaks of this in the context in Romans 6, he says, we were buried with Christ in baptism. So we die with Jesus in baptism, we rise with Jesus. And this is our life with Christ. So if I've, if I've died with him, that means I've died to sin. How can I live no, any longer in it? It doesn't make sense. He's saying there has to be a change. It's not enough to say, I don't sin. What am I doing in replacing of that sin? St. James says, therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. So it's not enough to say, I know how to do good. But what if, I, what if I'm not doing it? That's a sin in itself. See, the Lord Jesus, when he gave the parable, the good Samaritan, he said, go and do likewise. You have to do it. It's not enough to hear about it. When the Lord says through the Gospels and in the book of Revelation to the seven churches, he says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. To hear for what? Just to hear a nice song? Melody, some nice words, or to do something about what they heard. The call of repentance, or what the Lord says to this man today, is a call to action, to do something with what happened to him. This might clarify what we're trying to say. In Matthew chapter 12, the Lord says a very interesting example to clarify. He says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. So imagine an unclean spirit. Which house? He's talking about the soul that he left. After much anguish, you can imagine. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. I want us to really focus on the word empty. He finds it empty. So he leaves a soul after torturing and tormenting it. And then he roams around, comes back, and he finds this soul empty. What is the empty here? Empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So the Lord is telling us, we can't leave it empty. Okay, great. We have been healed of our affliction. We have been buried with Christ in baptism. Our sins are forgiven for his name's sake. That's wonderful. Now what? What will I do about it? What comes next? And that's why we're called to go from glory to glory. It's not just say, I'm a good Christian. That's not the goal, by the way. By the, the goal of Christianity is not to walk around with a, a, a label that says, hello, my name is good Christian. No. The goal is to be like Christ. The goal is to find Christ. The goal is to imitate Christ. The goal is to follow Christ. The goal is that he gradually imprints his image fully upon me that I may become his icon. An image of him, an icon of him. Every single one of us. This is the goal of Christianity. So we're called to not only clean up and empty out all the bad stuff and sweep it and put it in order, but to fill it with good. Lots of good. Lots of it. Like the wise virgins who kept extra oil with them in their vessels with their lamps. St. Paul gives us this, and we have this every morning. In the first hour of the Agbeya, in the prime prayer, we pray this passage from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, this Pauline epistle. He says, I therefore a prisoner for the Lord. You know this. Most of you have memorized this. You've heard this at least sometime before. I urge you, or I, I beseech you, to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. He's saying, it's time to get up and do some work. We've got work to do. When we wake up in the morning... 
And when our head is still on the pillow and we do the sign of the cross, the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen, we're barely waking up and we say, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And we stand up and say, Our Father who art in heaven. And we do three matanyas or prostrations in the name of the Holy Trinity. And we begin our mourning. That's not just, okay, I did my prayers for the day. Now what? No. This is a, a moment to say, now let's get to work. Prayer in the morning is for us to get to work. Not to get to the office or get to the morning coffee. Get to work the labor of the Lord, the labor of love, the work of the Lord. He says the harvest is great. The harvest is great and the laborers are few. Pray the Lord of the harvest that he may give, uh, send out more laborers into his harvest. So let's pray and say, Lord, thank you for what you give us and on a daily basis. It says in the Psalms that he loads us daily with benefits. Daily. It says in Lamentations, his mercy, through His mercies we are not consumed, they're renewed every day. Okay, so these benefits are loaded upon us daily, and the mercies are renewed daily. Now let's get to work for the glory of God. In every opportunity, let's be, like St. Paul says to Titus, be zealous for good works. Not only works that can be seen on the outside, but the works that are on the inside, in the heart, that no one sees but you and the Lord. And this will bring great fruits and many will praise God through it. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.